okay so in this uh, lecture we are going to define uh, an equivalence relation and that equivalence relation is going to give rise to equivalence classes and those equivalence classes will be called as cosets so first let us write one simple problem now so i am going to take h to be a subgroup of uh, g a g is a group i'm going to take h to be a subgroup of g and i'm going to define a relation the relation that i'm going to define is a is related to b if a inverse b belongs to h this relation i'm going to define and we will first prove that this relation r is uh, first of all what this relation r is a equivalence relation on the set h okay so let us now start proving the equivalence relation now we all know what is meant by equivalence relation for an equivalence relation you need three things you need it to be reflexive symmetric and transitive so let us first prove the reflexivity part for the definition of equivalence relation so i'll say reflexivity so for reflexivity we must first show that any element a is always related to a this is uh, the definition of equivalence relation this should hold for all a okay if for every element a in h right so if we tell so we are asking us a question that is a related to a it is equivalent to say that is by this definition is a inverse into a belonging to h is this true mm, this is equivalently meaning to say that what is a inverse into a we know that identity is is a inverse into a so we are asking that does identity belong to h now we all know that h is a subgroup so if h is a subgroup h must have the identity because every subgroup has an identity always so the answer to this question is yes so this means that a is related to a itself and therefore the reflexivity part is true now let us go for the symmetry okay now uh, what is symmetry if i try write symmetric so if a is related to b okay then i have to show that b is also related to a okay so if a is related to b means what if a is related to b means a inverse b will belong to the set h correct this is the definition of our relation this is how we have written as a relation so if a inverse b belongs to h and i know that h is a h is what h is a subgroup so in a subgroup we know identity is there closure is there and inverse also exists right so if a inverse b is in h then inverse of this element will also belong to h right if alpha is in h then alpha inverse is also in h so if a inverse b is in h then a inverse b its inverse will also belong to what it in its inverse will also belong to h but what is the inverse of a inverse into b okay and we know that alpha star beta inverse comes out to be what beta inverse star alpha inverse right so what is the inverse of a inverse b means it is b inverse multiplied by a inverse its inverse belongs to h right so inverse exists so let me write here because inverse exists in h and h is a subgroup so this means that b inverse into a inverse inverse is a so b inverse into a belongs to h if b inverse into a belongs to h this is say, same thing to say that b is related to a okay remember what was the definition of our relation a related to b means what a related to b we have written as a inverse b belongs to h so if i want to say b related to a means what means b inverse a belongs to belongs to h so we have got b is related to a so the symmetric part is also proved 
then the third part is what third part is transitive is this relation a transitive relation so that is also easy what do you ch check for transitivity if uh, a and b are related to each other and b and c are related to each other then i have to show that a is related to what a is related to c this is what i have to show now let us start with what is the meaning of a related to b a related to b means what a related to b means a inverse b belongs to h what is the meaning of b related to c the meaning of b related to c is b inverse c belongs to h so i know that a inverse b is also in h b inverse c is also in h and h is a h is a subgroup so closure is also in h so what is a closure so a inverse b star b inverse into c that is also in h and when i use associativity it is a inverse into b b inverse into c is belonging to h and what is b b inverse that is identity so a inverse c belongs to h what is the meaning of a inverse c belongs to h means a and c are what a and c are automatically related so what we have proved is that a related to b which is given by what which is defined as what in this problem in this problem we have defined as a inverse b belongs to h this is what this is an equivalence relation okay and uh, equivalence relation on g okay uh, somewhere uh, upstairs i have written it is equal to an h sorry equivalence relation on g this is an equivalence relation on the set entire set g okay because h is a subgroup of g so because of this equivalence relation okay on the set g what has happened now we know that equivalence classes theorem states what what is the equivalence class theorem says it says that once you have an equivalence relation on a set then it will give rise to equivalence classes okay and what is the property of these equivalence classes these equivalence classes are what equivalence classes are disjoint and what and second property you know is that union of all the equivalence classes is nothing but the full set who is the full set the full set is g so as as a, as far as the picture is concerned this is the group g this is the set h okay and because of this set and the um, and the equivalence relation we have defined the theorem of equivalence classes tells you that you will get what you will get different different classes okay and these classes uh, are what equivalence classes now let us write uh, what is the equivalence class given by okay now what we will do is we will take one element a okay in uh, suppose a is anywhere okay and i'm going to write the equivalence class for a okay now if i have any element a and uh, x is also some element so what is the what is the definition of a related to x according to the definition what is a related to x a related to x means what means a inverse x should belong to what a inverse x should belong to h correct and therefore this means that a inverse x is equal to how much a inverse x is in h so a inverse x is in in, in this set see i can i've shown in the figure a inverse x is in h okay this means that a inverse x is equal to some element h the h has elements right so so th this is some element h this in implies that a inverse x is equal to h for some x for some h in h and therefore what is the when i left multiply uh, when i shift this a inverse on that side i will have a into a inverse x is equal to a into h okay this a into a inverse will become identity so this means identity into x is equal to a into h this dot is a star okay so i hope you understand that 
so this means that x is equal to how much x is equal to a into h so this means that what have i concluded from all these calculations that look at this a related to x and look at this this x these two calculations i will write down again so if a is related to x okay then this means that x must be equal to what x must be equal to the or must be equal to a h for some h for some h where h is belonging to what h is belonging to capital h so this means that if any x is related to a if any member x is related to a then that member then that member or that element must be of the form what must be the form of that member that member must be of the form a into h and therefore i will collect all such people which are of the form a into h and i will collect all such collect all such means i'm going to collect all such elements which is of the form a star h where h is what h is in h this set is nothing but the equivalence class it is the equivalence class of which member it is the equivalence class of of which member have we collected the equivalence class of a okay and this is actually defined as what this is nothing but definition of a coset so what is a coset i'm going to define a coset as i'm going to denote it by a star h which is also denoted by square bracket a and this is the definition of a coset what is a star a a star a is a star h where h belong to h so this so this uh, this is how the definition of coset has arisen okay if i multiply the element on the right hand side then that el element will become what then that set will now become what now how will I, how will i get the right cosets i'll just i'll take a minute and tell you that also so instead of defining the relation a related to b equal to a inverse b belonging to h what i will do is i will make a small change here instead of writing a inverse b i will write ab inverse okay again this relation will also turn up to be equivalence relation and then i will get equivalence classes using the equivalence classes i will get the definition of square bracket a in that square bracket a you will automatically get the a on the right hand side and you will get h star a where h is belonging to the subgroup h and therefore now this will become the definition of what this will become the definition of the right coset so this uh, equivalence relation and its equivalence classes these three these two things and the equivalence class theorem has given us a conclusion that these cosets are nothing but equivalence classes okay this is how the definition of coset has come so cosets are actually what cosets are equivalence classes and because of the, since they are equivalence classes okay we have two properties of cosets what are the two properties of equivalence classes the same property will be the uh, will be shared by cosets because these cosets are nothing but equivalence classes we all know that all equivalence classes are disjoint and therefore now you can say that these cosets are also disjoint i am if I, when i say cosets i am only talking about left cosets or right cosets don't mix the left cosets with the right cosets okay when i am writing the set sentence cosets are disjoint means what all left cosets are disjoint and second statement is all right cosets are disjoint. don't take some left some right don't mix them up like that okay so the first statement is cosets are disjoint from each other and what is the second statement we know about equivalence classes that union of all equivalence classes is the full set so here union of all cosets will be equal to the full set who is our set our set is our group so this means union of all cosets is 
full G. I will write this as like this. G is equal to H star. First coset is H star identity or A star. Let me write the left coset. Uh, A star H is. And let me write here. So I'll put A equal to E. A equal to E means what? First coset is H itself. Then I will write A star H, B star H, and so on. Okay. Dot dot dot. So this means that these cosets unite and form the complete G. If I replace this U by square bracket, if I replace it by like this. this union this type of thing means that now they are disjoint also in that case i don't need to write this particular statement okay so if i'm just writing a union b okay it means that a and b can intersect also each other that is also allowed and union is this complete part okay so when i just write union of two sets i will write a u but if i am specifically writing it like this then the meaning of this is that A and B are two sets. I am going to take their union, but they are what? But they are disjoint from each other. Now here we observe that these cosets not only form the full G, but they are also disjoint. So even if you write this single line, means it will be clear to us that this this is which type of union? This is the union of disjoint sets. Okay, this important concept this in, in this important remark that i have written your second part this will be very very useful for us in proving the upcoming uh, theorem which is called as the lagrange's theorem okay